10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! Hi folks, welcome to A Voice in the Desert. Once again, my name is Caesar, and I am A Voice in the Desert. Today we're going to be talking about a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful message. We're going to be talking about the great news of the word of revelations. And we're going to talk about a special topic, one that came to my attention as I was reading its word today. And it read, The Three Angels' Messages which I call a call to true worship. The Christian aspect of a denomination is barely recognizable. Everyone can be right. There can only be one actual truth. This struggle to live, okay? This struggle to live in real truth has been ongoing throughout history. The accounts of God's people practicing true worship, then falling into false worship, then repenting and returning to true worship, are repeated throughout the Bible. Revelation describes false worship as Babylon. Given this term since the historical Babylonian Empire exemplified false worship, the three angels' messages are intended for today. That's right. You heard me. It's in the book of Revelation, starting in chapter 14, which we're going to get to in a little bit later. Okay? But the three angels' messages are intended for today's godly people. These are intended to get to all people that not even one may be lost. The conclusion is that the first angel message is a call for people everywhere to turn away from mad-made traditions that have become mixed into biblical Christianity over the past 2,000 years. Just as He has throughout history today, God is calling His people to come back to Him. He wants His people to shake off the barnacles off. That's right, he wants you to shake off those barnacles, so to speak, and to return to a more pure, more primitive form of Christianity that is based exclusively, that it is based exclusively on biblical facts. And that biblical fact is the true word of God. The three angels' messages. You will find a lot of this information in the Bible, in Apocalypse, Revelations. You will find a lot about it online. You will find about it everywhere, but except in one place yet, you might not hear about it. And you might not hear about it much. That is in the house of the Lord. Why? Because the enemy does not want this message to go out. He wants people to be oblivious about this message from these three angels given to us. Because it is a message for us for today. That's right, today, now, this year. Wow. What a strong feeling of the Holy Spirit I feel when I preach this. The three angel messages symbolizes a process that brings out the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. This will be a powerful world-altering event that has not occurred since Pentecost. For that reason, this extraordinary time can be justifiable or justifiably be called Pentecost II. This will be part two 
or the time of the later rain. That's correct, the time of the latter rain. The three angel messages are clear evidence that God is raising up and preparing a people to participate in the supernatural event just as he did in the first of Pentecost. The angels announced that this awakening of God's people from all nations, languages, and ethnic groups is on the horizon. It's right there. This remnant group of biblical Christians, backed by God's Spirit, will form a unite front to proclaim the everlasting gospel to every single person on earth. The first Pentecost in Jerusalem began the work of proclaiming the gospel to the world. The second Pentecost will be earth-wide and will finish the Great Commission. Once this modern-day Pentecost is completed, all people on earth will have heard the gospel message. Now, Brother Caesar, what are these messages? I'm anxious to hear and I'm worried. No, do not worry because this is good news. This is the Lord preparing us before time so we can be ready when the time comes. So don't be afraid of this message. On the contrary, study it. Write it upon your hearts, the tablets of your heart. Put it in your mind. Spread the message. Yes, spread the message of the first angels. The account of the three angels is found in Revelation 14. In this prophecy, the Apostle John was given a vision of our time. He saw three angels with a final warning that was to be given in the last days. Here is the first angel's message. And this is what the word of the Lord says. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. You will find this in Revelations 14, verses 6 through 7. I repeat, Revelations 14, 6 through 7. I want you to write this down, jot it down, memorize it. I want you to meditate on this word today, tomorrow, and the day after. Meditate it day and night. In this message, the, ace, the angel makes three specific points. First, God's rescue plan for humanity must be shared with every person alive. Second, the angels call on those who will to fear God and give honor to Him. The third point is a call for those people who chose God to come out of non-scriptural worship practices. Oh Lord, blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now here comes the second message of the second angel. The second angel picks up where the first angel leaves off. The angel announces that the everlasting gospel will be well known to the world, causing the false belief system referred to as Babylon to fall. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great which made all nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. And where do I find that, brother? You find that in Revelations 14, 8. Meditate on that word of God. 
The reason for this eventual collapse of this false system will be the worldwide knowledge of God's truth that is being proclaimed. The false teachings prevalent in much of Christianity will soon crumble once the work of sharing God's plan of salvation to all people is complete. Many are coming out of the Babylon fall system. Many are coming out of the Babylon false belief system and accepting God's truth and mercy. Blessed be the name of the word of God. Now, what is that third message, Brother Caesar? That third angel's message is the following. Unfortunately, Revelation 13 reveals that the global government will unite with those who willingly stubborn to the truth and remain in false worship. Can you go by that again, Brother Caesar? Yes, I will. Unfortunately, Revelation 13 reveals that the global government will unite with those who are willingly stubborn to the truth and remain in false worship. This government will enforce unbiblical religious doctrines on the world population by controlling the international banking system. This is how it's going to control you. It's going to control you by your finances, by your money. Fear not, you who are son of God. Because we fear he who is the owner of gold and silver. And that is our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. They're going to try to control us by controlling our finances, our monies. That's why we are not to develop a neediness on the finances of this world, but on the needs and fear of God. And that is a holy fear of God. That is what we have to depend on. That is our currency, His mercy, His grace, His faith, His love. These are the true currencies of a Christian. Wow. By trying to control the banking system. That's why the world goes crazy when Wall Street goes down. Or Wall Street goes on a downfall. Or when the banks almost fell back in around, I believe, 2017. Or 2007, I believe. When the banking system fell, that's when the world went crazy. Can you all remember that? The bank bailouts? That's right. The bank bailouts. The world went crazy in saving it. Why? Because it's the only thing it has to control us. And it can't lose it. Because it will be used against us. All people will soon be exposed to the truth of the everlasting gospel. Some will choose to accept God's offer of salvation, but others, having full knowledge of the consequences, will choose to turn their backs on God forever. Many will allow their fear of the government to outweigh their trust in God's ability to save them. Brothers and sisters, do not allow this. Do not look towards man to save you. Look towards Jesus Christ. The author of our salvation. Our King and Savior. The one that died on the cross and spread his blood. That is the one that we have to look to. Don't worry about this false government that's coming. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. Because once this comes to pass, the question of their allegiance will be settled. If anyone worships the beast and his image 
and receive his mark on the forehead or on the hand. He too will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. You will find this in Revelations 14, 9 through 10. All people will be given the same choice that Adam and Eve had. The question is, will they be loyal to the God of creation? Or will they be loyal to the corrupt earthly system that is controlled by the very same angel who deceived Adam and Eve in Eden? And that is Satan. Will you be deceived again the way Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden? I know I won't. For such a time as this, the Lord has raised me. For such as a time as this, the Lord has trained me up in His Word. For a time such as this, to preach the Word to you, I have been born. And I believe today I have completed that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wow. We're going to continue to explore a little bit about the global government that is being spoken about in Revelation 13 a bit deeper. And we may find that at a later podcast. But I need you to listen to this and listen to it very carefully. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. That's in Revelations 14, 12. In this message by the third angel, the qualifications of those who will escape the judgment of God as he fights evil are made clear. They have two distinctive characteristics. They keep the commandment of God and they have a rock-solid faith in Jesus as their one and only hope for eternal life. This text makes it clear that this remnant group, loyal both to God's commandment and to the faith of Jesus Christ, will need to exercise great patience during this time of decision and persecution. This will be the ultimate test of their loyalty to God. So, Brother Caesar, where are we now in this time frame But this time has not yet arrived, brothers and sisters. This time has not yet arrived. So, where are we in this prophecy of the three angels? Currently, we are within the first angel's message. That is my belief. The proclamation of the everlasting gospel to the world. And it is a pleasure to report that We are listening to God's word. Okay? And that this was preached a while back. Almost 2,000 years ago. The everlasting gospel is being proclaimed in countries all around the world. Different medias are being used to take the word of God. We here at A Voice in the Desert take this by heart in spreading the gospel, in making sure you learn of the Word of God. Millions are learning about God's rescue plan, many for the very first time ever. Many, maybe some of you who are listening to this message for the first time. Maybe this is your first opportunity to, let's continue to spread this message and bring more people to the truth. 
this may be your first opportunity also. Continue reading the messages. Go back on the message. Listen if to from the beginning. And follow those biblical passages. And I need you to study them yourself. I don't need you to believe me. I need you to believe the word of God. And in order for you to believe. You need to read and study the word of God. Once again. My name is Caesar. And I am a voice in the desert. God bless you all.